You are watching WCSD from the Callaway County School District. Oh, hey there Lakers. Coming up from today's program, we'll take a look at the March Free Quality, Urban Legends Kentucky, and a recap of 2016. All that and more coming up on today's show of Laker TV. Oh, this way. <laughs> Hey there, Lakers. I'm Kenan Buchanan. And I am millionaire and former stockbroker, Jordan Belfort. Thanks for joining us. Well, after weeks of drama before and after the election, the day has finally come. Donald Trump is now officially the 45th president of the United States. In fact, while we're taping today's show, Mr. Trump was taking the oath of office as part of today's inauguration celebration in Washington, D.C. And did you know that one of our very own CCHS students, Jackson Hale, is in there in person? You might have seen the story earlier this week on News Channel 6. It featured sophomore Jackson Hale as he prepared for his trip to Washington. Wow, talk about a history lesson. Meanwhile, back here in Murray, Kentucky, a crowd of local citizens have gathered at Country Crossroads Restaurant for a presidential inauguration prayer luncheon and live TV viewing of the ceremony. Laker TV has a camera crew there at the celebration and we will have a report next week about the gathering and what some of the attendants have to say about the pivotal moment in American history. But not everyone is so enthusiastic about Donald Trump's victory, and they'll be publicly voicing their concerns this Saturday. Local organizers here in Murray are calling it a March for Equality, and Laker TV's Josh Connor has a closer look. The historic inauguration of Donald Trump took place earlier today. Although many voters in Kentucky supported Donald Trump at the polls in November, not everyone is enthusiastic about our new president. New polls released by CNN show that 53% of Americans viewed Trump unfavorably, and only 4 in 10 Americans approve of Trump's transition into the Oval Office. Trump responded to the polls on Twitter, saying that the same people who did the phony election polls and were so wrong are now doing approval rating polls. They are rigged just like before. I spoke with some activists at Murray State who not only disapprove of Trump, but of the state of the American democracy as well. They're even planning a march to protest it. Well, obviously, the inauguration was the, you know, we're, we're, we're um, doing this in concert with the uh, Women's March in Washington. Um, and in fact, we have, you know, a number of people from Murray are going to the, uh, the Women's March in Washington and the, pro the day of protest before. Um, so in many ways, I, I, I personally think that American democracy was in real trouble. Uh, before this election, but now it's obviously in the sewer. America, I can't, no time in my lifetime have I remembered the sort of, um, the kind of uh, just disgusting rhetoric that's coming from the new president. The March for Equality and Social Justice, it's um, really a celebration of um, principles of democracy and, and um, equality that, that, you know, Americans have struggled for years and years to achieve, and, and now, there's a fear that, that those struggles are under threat and that, that the achievements we've made um, will, you know, will disappear. It's a very dangerous time, and, 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 but we're not fearful and we're not scared. And you know, just as the civil rights uh, movement happened on the streets, our movement's going happen, to have to happen on the streets. Democracy's always happen, happened on the streets in the United States. The March for Equality will be taking place Saturday, January 21st, beginning at 10 a.m. on the MSU campus. The event starts in the faculty hall parking lot and will end downtown Murray with speeches and live music. Okay, now let's completely change gears for a minute. Some studies show that the kind of pet you choose may tell what kind of person you truly are. But did you know the type of soup you like may do the exact same thing? A study from a University of Illinois professor shows that your favorite soup can be an indicator of your personality. For example, those who like chicken noodle tend to go to church more often, are pet lovers, and spend more time indoors. And if you're a vegetable soup kind of person, then you're like a homebody at heart kind of guy, but not very spontaneous. By contrast, tomato soup lovers are more adventurous. So, since January is National Soup Month, we sent Bradley Smith to find out what your favorite types of soup are. 
January is National Soup Month, and as we just heard, what soup you like can determine your attitude. So we decided we'd figure out what attitudes Callaway County has. What's your favorite kind of soup? Potato. Uh, my husband's Italian potato soup. It has Italian sausage and potatoes in it, and it's really, really good. Chicken noodle soup. Tomato. And rice. <laughs> <laughs> we must never come back here. I like potato soup. Vegetable soup? Loaded baked potato soup. Uh, chicken soup. Right, our family's favorite soup is vegetable soup. Loaded potato. But we put meat in it. Potato soup. Like hamburgers or stew beef meat. So why we call it vegetable, I don't know. Chicken noodle. But do you do the same? Uh, potato soup, yeah. Why do we call it vegetable soup? Chicken noodle soup. Uh, warm kind. Potato soup. Chicken noodle soup. I don't know. The soup kind. Tomato basil. Tomato basil. All of the above. Lasagna. Alphabet spaghetti soup. I don't like soup. I only eat soup when I'm sick. And when you are sick, what else do you eat? Chicken. Vegetables. You like chicken? I do like chicken. Do you like chicken? I do like chicken. What do you pour in your chicken? What do you put in yours? <laughs> Mexican? I like salsa in my chicken. What do you want in your chicken? You like salsa? I do like salsa too in my chicken. I like doing tacos with my chicken and putting salsa on those tacos. Like you put some salt too? Huh? Some salt, like the guy. Pss, pss, pss. Oh, yeah. I put lemon and salt. Wonderful, I do too. Yeah. Why do we call it vegetable soup? So, Kenan, what's your favorite soup? I like chicken noodle soup, but just the broth, the chicken, and the noodles. Nothing else in there making it all disturbed. What well, about you? I gotta say mine is definitely chicken noodle. Is it for the same reason as me or a little different? No, it just completes me, you know? Well, great minds do think alike because chicken noodle is the soup or choice. Before Christmas break, one of our seniors got some exciting news. Haley Glenn designed a logo for the Kentucky High School Athletic Association's 100th year of operation. This is her logo. She says that although she hoped to win, she never really considered it possible until she was announced as a finalist. Congrats on the accomplishment, Haley. Coming up during the break, you'll see our Laker TV short department's blast from the past making a much anticipated appearance, as well as after the break, a look at some Kentucky urban legends. All that and more coming up on this week's show. Talk to me. First seems to be a robber who is on the run near the barber shop off fourth. This seems like it's going to be a hairy situation. We're on our way. Look, there he is! It's your arch enemy, the razor. Well, I guess it's time to go talk to my old friend and cut up. Let's get him. Can't go nowhere. It's over. You can't catch me. You can't even shave yourselves. Oh! 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 What's wrong? What's wrong? It hits gone. What's gone? My manhood. Capturing the razor is a small price to pay. I think I'm gonna throw up. It's okay. I'll get you some help. All right. I know exactly who will help you. How? Who? The chief. Why? How's that? Before he was the chief, he went by another name. And it was... Babyface. Todd's a great guy. I mean, look at him. 
What a sweetheart. Attaboy. Wait, Todd, what are you doing? How totally selfish and untod like of you. Come on, Todd. Come on, man. Do you know your state and the things in it that go bump in the night? Sure, some stories are just that, stories. But there's one disturbing Kentucky event that has become an urban legend. And it happened right here in our region, which ties to CCHS. We're talking about the infamous vampire cult. This past November marked the 20th anniversary of a gruesome murder with a Callaway County connection. Jillian Hackathorn looks back at this famous Kentucky urban legend. What do you really know about the vampire cult in the 90s? We asked Lyles what she thought about it. I haven't ever been there um, personally, but they talk about how that's where Rod Farrell used to hang out and do whatever it was that they did hanging out together. Uh, and Rod Farrell and Scott Anderson and Dana Cooper were students from Callaway. Um, I remember them. Uh, Scott Anderson seemed very quiet. Dana Cooper was very quiet and unassuming, so you wouldn't have expected them to be involved in something like that. Uh, Rod Farrell was strange, but considering it's Murray and around here, you really just didn't expect. Um, we asked Lyles about the California Hotel or the Vampire Hotel, which is located along the northern side of BLBL. It wasn't in good shape, um, but I would venture to, to guess that the notoriety of being the Vampire Hotel, a lot of people wanted to go up there and see it, and with it not being in good shape, I would think it would be a hazard. So I would think that would probably play into why it, it was torn down. In 2002, a movie came out which is based off the incident called Vampire Clan. I've seen a little bit of the movie and I've seen some documentaries. I'd like to have the time to sit down and watch the whole movie and see, you know, if we realize what was going on, to see it from that perspective. Why would they do something like this to you? Because they're vampires. Um, in the documentaries, the more current ones, he seems um, repentant about what he's done. He's been in prison for a, a good long while, so, you know, that could be an accurate portrayal of him, and it might be that he wants people to see him differently, even though he really hasn't changed. Now that 2K17 has kicked off, Laker TV believes that it's time to take a look on what exactly happened in 2016, and our very own Jordan Young will show us all the ups and downs last year had. Yeah. Yeah. 2016, what a year. Yeah. Is it good or bad? I have no idea. Yeah. All through this country, all through the memes Come on and let me tell you all we've seen We saw Bama win another We saw Peyton second ring We saw Leo win the Oscar We saw Trump and Hillary We saw DC take on Marvel Again The Cavs and Golden State Again We saw the Cubs win the series Again Under the dive we've been manic and challenged We've juju'd on that beat for a month And now what's the next thing to come? All we do is wait All I want to see is just a break, break, break But we have some more news for you So just wait, wait, wait Come on We just got a new prequel for Star Wars Oh, and Trump got elected what 
2016 was a year of tragedy, and I want to take a moment to recognize those who we lost. Wow. Jordan, you got some pipes on you. How did that last part go again? 2016! Great. D applaud. Well, I don't know a better way to edit off a show than Jordan almost shattering his windpipes. So that's all we have for this week's show. See you next time on Laker TV. So, Kenan, can you sell me this pen? I, I ended the show, but... Is this a pencil? I how am I going to sell you a pen if this is a pencil? Oh.